the next disorder we'll be discussing is Hartnup disorder. Hartnup disorder is based upon the name of the first family in which the disorder was described. It belongs to a category of neutral amino acids, especially tryptophan metabolism defect. So, first thing to know that this shows autosomal recessive inheritance. Second thing is, there is a defect in the transport of neutral amino acids which are mono amino monocarboxylic acid. We know that each amino acid has a amino group and a carboxylic acid group which may sometimes be uh, disproportionate to is to one ratio can also be there. But it comprises mono amino monocarboxylic amino acid neutral amino acid their transport is defective especially tryptophan and this defective transport is there at the level of GIT as well as at the level of renal tubules. So, what is the molecular basis? Molecular basis says that there is a defective protein in B081 transporter coded by SLC6A19 gene. The chromosome involved is short arm of chromosome 5, 5P15.33. Although it is a super speciality thing we are discussing, but two years back in PG entrance exam of Gipmer, the name of the gene and the transporter protein was asked. So, it is already asked question in Central Institute's PG entrance exam. Can be asked as a, uh, can be repeated in super speciality. What is the name of the gene and the transport? So, this is important thing and can be a potential MCQ. So, most of these heart nerve disorder patients are found to be asymptomatic. In some of the symptomatic patients, you may find features related to cutaneous hypersensitivity or cutaneous photosensitivity. Tryptophan deficiency tends to produce a niacin deficiency like state. So, these patients will have a cutaneous photosensitivity with a pellagra like rash. They have a pellagra like presentation. I hope you remember that pellagra has a tendency to produce uh, cutaneous hypersensitivity in photo exposed parts and the typical manifestation of that described is called as casal necklace. Other than that, the second thing in symptomatic patients which is found is intermittent ataxia. Intermittent or episodic nature of neurological features is very characteristic of the disease. Intermittent ataxia may sometimes be associated with intermittent behavioral disorders which tend to appear during the episode of ataxia and disappear when the patient is not having any CNS involvement. So, these are the two cardinal features. A lot of other variable features have been described but they are not that important or very characteristic. Coming to the investigation part. Urine of these patients tends to show amino acid urea involving neutral amino acids. So, this is important. The urine excretion of the other amino acids like proline, hydroxyproline and arginine tends to remain normal. And this finding, it helps to distinguish heart nerve disorder from Fanconi syndrome where there is generalized amino acid urea. So, here it is selective amino acid urea involving the neutral amino acids and these amino acids which are mentioned, they are spared. In Fanconi, they will also be involved. And diagnosis can be established by, as I said, intermittent nature, episodic nature of the CNS symptoms and characteristic findings on the urine amino acid analysis. If you want to do molecular analysis, that is also available by SLC 6A19 gene analysis. Coming to therapy, treatment comprises uh, administration of large doses of nicotinamide or nicotinic acid. The dose is 50 to 300 milligrams per day along with a high protein diet which is indicated. So, this is the first disorder in this uh, other amino acids that you need to know that is heart nerve disease. Quickly we move to the glycine metabolism defects. Glycine as you know it is a non-essential amino acid. It Glycine metabolism is closely related to serine metabolism. Now, glycine is a very simple, small, neutral amino acid and glycine is involved in the CNS as a neurotransmitter. Most of the glycine metabolism defects arise due to defective cleavage enzyme system. Now, there is a specific cleavage enzyme system which comprises four proteins. So, uh, the four proteins include P protein which is the most important component. It is also called as glycine decarboxylase. Second is the H protein. Third is T protein and fourth is L protein. So, 
the major inborn error of metabolism related to glycine is called as hyperglycinemia that is the circulating levels of glycine are inappropriately elevated hyperglycinemia can be of two types you can have a ketotic hyperglycinemia and a non ketotic hyperglycinemia ketotic hyperglycinemia is also called as secondary hyperglycinemia it is seen as a consequence of various organic acidemias which as a bystander effect also cause inhibition of glycine enzyme system so conditions like methyl malonic acidemia propionic acidemia and all the other organic acidemias which we shall be discussing separately they can have ketotic hyperglycinemia why we call it as ketotic because there is increased serum glycine levels which is always accompanied with ketoacidosis so ketosis and acidosis both are present and the management primarily comprises the underlying management of organic acidemia themselves the second variety is the non ketotic hyperglycinemia which is also called as primary hyperglycinemia and this is the one that we need to remember this is the one which can be asked in exam and is considered to be a true inborn error of metabolism related to glycine so non ketotic hyperglycinemia what is this again there is a defect in the glycine enzyme cleavage system or cleavage enzyme system most of the forms there are many forms of nkh most of them are found to have defects in the p protein that is 75% of them particularly in the neonatal or early presentation so defects in p protein comprise 75% defects in t protein comprise around 20% and h protein is responsible in around 1% the other one is not implicated so and most of them are again inherited as they show autosomal recessive inheritance as i said four types of nkh have been described the first variety is the neonatal form neonatal form is considered to be the most common form as well as the most severe form the time of presentation is between anywhere between 6 hours of life till 8th day of life so in the first 7 to 8 days the disease tends to manifest and how does it manifest there is onset of vomiting there is failure to feed or suck there is failure to feed or suck feeding and sucking is impaired there are episodes of apnea and there is progressive coma seizures have also been reported the seizures typically are found to have to be of myoclonic variety so myoclonic jerks are common in these children as the name itself says there is the blood pH is found to be normal and there, are no, there is no ketoacidosis in the body. And this neonatal form is found to be a very severe form and almost 30% of these neonatal form patients, they tend to die. The rest 70% who survive they are left with severe intellectual disability so they will have mental retardation and various forms of cns disorders so quality of life becomes very poor unfortunately the second form is known as infantile form infantile form tends to present in infancy beyond the neonatal period infantile form the features are similar but mild compared to neonatal form and here also mental retardation or intellectual disability does develop the third form is called as the late onset form late onset form can manifest as late as up to any time from first year of life 
टिल अप टू थर्टी थ्री ईयर्स इट कैन मैनिफेस्ट एंड द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स इन लेट ऑनसेट इंक्लूड दे आर स्लाइटली डिफरेंट दे इंक्लूड कोरियो एथिटॉइड मूवमेंट्स एटेक्सिया एंड बिहेवियरल चेंजेस and all these manifestations tend to be episodic becoming more severe whenever there is a intercurrent illness the mental dysfunction is not that severe but uh, some of them may have some uh, mildly low iq as compared to general population and fourth is considered to be a transient form which occurs due to immaturity of the cleavage enzyme system transient is the one which presents which behaves as neonatal form but tends to improve without therapy and this usually has a good outcome now coming to investigations how would you make the diagnosis in investigations there are three things that we need to know first the blood levels of serum glycine are elevated how much they are elevated up to 8 times the normal value so normograms we use for defining the normal value the second thing is the csf levels of serum glycine are increased significantly i am using a double arrow they are increased almost 30 times that of normal and the third important thing is we take csf glycine by serum glycine or plasma glycine levels serum or plasma glycine levels this ratio is elevated it is elevated more than 0.08 normally it is found to be less than 0.02 so equal to or more than 0.08 is seen in nkh patients particularly the neonatal and infantile forms so these are the three investigations which help you in reaching the diagnosis of these patients and sometimes if able to do csf serine levels are also found to be low so you can put here there is csf serine is found to be low what is the therapy no effective treatment unfortunately is known in these patients some patients with mild disease may experience some improvement with enteral sodium benzoate and drugs that counteract the effect of glycine on neuronases such as dextromethorphan and felbamate have shown some benefit in the milder forms but unfortunately it is a disease which still does not have a very good outcome so this finishes the glycine metabolism defect subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from preplader